So who were in your intake in those years at Sydney Grammar that you recall who went on to contribute to the legal profession as much as you did? Um, Well, uh, Mervyn Finlay, who was a great friend of mine at school, still is a great friend of mine. Um, uh, He went on to uh, become a barrister. He was first of all a solicitor, but only a solicitor for a short period of time. Then he became a barrister... I'm not so sure that he was a solicitor. He was an article clerk, certainly. Um, But he actually shared chambers with me in my early days at the bar in a basement room in Denman Chambers, Um, uh, a room that I had to take legal proceedings against an official liquidator in order to recover possession of the chambers. I'll have to ask you a bit more about that in due course. That's that's very interesting. Of course, the Denman Chambers no longer exists. No, that's right. Mm. I've seen pictures of it, though. It was even years ago being called the old Denman Chambers. That's right, yes. Mm. You weren't suffering a case of rising damp, were you? I was, actually, yes, because um, this basement room uh, was occupied by one of the official liquidators, but only for the purpose of storing his papers and files. And, in fact, um, we discovered that the floor had given way, so really the floor consisted of sand, um, and then when I recovered possession, we had to go in, put a floor in. The floor fortunately sloped inward, so if you came to see me or deliver a brief to me, you were climbing uphill to get out. Uh, and it was one of those uh, rooms uh, which you saw, many of them in London and English cities in the Victorian era, where there was uh, a grill, a window, with an iron grill that came up to surface level, and you could actually pass briefs down through that grill to me in the... And some people who knew me well did that. It sounds almost... Well, it does. It is Victorian. But were there many many other buildings that had the same grill and that type of thing, or was that only in Denman Chambers? No, I don't think so. I think that was... There may have been one other chamber that uh, fronted on the street in that way with an overhead grill. Um, uh, I imagine the way the building was constructed, that would be so. Uh, But I can't really recall very clearly the other set of chambers. You must have felt a bit like Wemmick and Dickens. Well, I did in a way, yes. Actually, I used to call the place the Chateau d'If because it was underground. (laughs) And actually, when it rained, it seemed to be rather wet around the grill of the window. I suppose you had fantasies of tunnelling your way out, like the the Abbe Farai. So going back to your school days and... uh, By the uh, way, before we leave that, um, the the people who ran Denman Chambers, who were barristers, I remember Clive Teese, who was was the chairman of directors, um, had a program whereby they were prepared to grant a concurrent lease of premises in the building to ex-servicemen who then had a prior right under the landlord and tenant legislation uh, to recover possession. So it was in that capacity that I took a concurrent lease and then brought proceedings against the official liquidator, uh, which resulted in uh, a case in the Central Court of Petty Sessions in Liverpool Street, as a result of which the magistrate made an order entitling me to possession of the premises. A good outcome indeed. Yes, that's right. 